makes the helmet. Um, am I going to do anything amazing? Yes. You're probably thinking, wow, someone said they're going to do something amazing. The amazing thing is basics. This is how we construct our lives every day, the way we conduct ourselves as human beings, and how we conduct ourselves in our trade. It's strengthening the foundation of what we do every day as humans and as tradesmen. So on that basis, am I going to do anything amazing? No. But it is amazing because these are the building blocks of our lives in a very tough profession. Um, I've learned over the years, the more you put in, it gets easier for the brain. It doesn't get easier for the body. I can't get you out of that one, I'm afraid, because Farrell really is not easy on the body. But you need to help yourself by coming here, going there, going to see him, going to practice with him. Um, and this is the building blocks of your basics every day. And this is what I've done for 32 years. Um, you know, as I say, Muhammad Ali once said, if someone had you know, 50 thinks the same as they did at 20, they've just wasted 30 years. Um, or nearly 50. I haven't wasted 30 years because I've... Somebody said to me yesterday, actually, um, you've nothing else to do, you've done it all. I've done all the accreditation, but I'll be forever the student. We wake up every day, we're still thinking, we're still learning, it's, it's the way it goes. Until the day you die, you're never going to know. So, you know, accreditation comes and goes and we enjoy it and we love it because we're trying to better ourselves as humans and as tradesmen. But um, it all stems from the basics. Um, so what I'm going to do today, get this fire on. I'm going to go backwards. So I'm going to put you make your shoe. Tennis shoes are a part of our lives. Um, when I first started, my mentor of mine, Colin Smith, was 27, 28. Section of the British 
doing this in this order for that reason of going backwards. Just making a general idea of shape. Um, and it's the, the, the infinity of this job is incredible. We do this every day, we turn a front and a hind and we fit it to a foot. We do one thing, we show a digit. That's all we do. We're not a plumber that does this joint, that joint, an electrician has got to deal with so many different fittings and this, that and the other. And you just blow your brain some of these professions, the other stuff they have to know. We do one thing every day. Yeah? So what does that mean? Well we better be damn good at it. Yeah? And if you don't do your accreditations and put the time in, as Craig Trinkle would say, you're a bad daddy. And he's right. And not only that, you're robbing yourself of it. You're robbing yourself of an easier tomorrow by putting it in today, no matter how small it is. By the time this week is over, I'll be watching guys compete, talking to people. Something will happen for next week that will make something easier. Yeah, even the small movies here and here, I'm doing is they pull.
How many in here have put concave on? Oh yeah, you all know what's like. You've all been through the pain. Some of us are still going through it. Concave is a big deal, we do a lot of it in the UK, especially for hunters, big hunters. Um, big thick stuff, separate the whole, each one of the concave is one of the hunters.
Over the lack of blows, we might simply back basics. When we level still, we over lack our blows, same deal on the tilt. Over the lack of blows, it's no more difficult than that. Half and half, I call it. Not like a creamer. I suppose it is in a way. It's a bit of both. We're reducing the section for that section to go in the foot. And then we're turning that new section to go into the foot. So we're going down halfway. And now we're going to push it up half again. Now don't isolate until the very end of the toe. Turn the toe up. So it's really a part of the break over. But it doesn't have to be exaggerated because I've put half of the section in and I can lift it up slightly so the break over is enjoying a subtle lift and half the section is gone. So when you look at it from here, it's like, wow, that's a lot. No, it's not. Yeah? And of course, breaker out over is only effective if you do it too much, you're not going to use it anyway. Yeah? And then we need to decide, you just apply break over. It goes back to a saying that I've used for years. Confirmation determines type. Type influence is most suitable use, and use influences various requirements. That pretty much sums up our job. Okay. So we want to put this break over shoe on this horse, um, but his knees face out. Yeah. That, sorry, his pastors face out, but his knees are straight. So what are we doing? Break over to the foot or break over to the knee? We actually put a break over, oh look at the knees. The knees are the way the animal's going. This business here, whether it's that, this, it's various, valgus, or straight. If the toe out, they're going to break over in the center all day long. If they face forward, they're going to break over to the outside of the toe slightly. And if they face in, they're going to break over more to the outside of the toe. So that is where the break over happens. Yeah. So we, we also aim to do the same thing on here. It's where the knee is facing. Yeah. So it brings me to another point. I've got to be chased out of the room now or so. A good old friend, the natural balance shoe. Hallelujah. Um, okay. I'm going to put it on. He faces him. Customer says, I've got to have them. Okay. Do you want them crooked on the feet, or do you want them the way the knees facing? Or do you want it breaking over the outside corner? Oh, I don't know. Why don't we just do that? <laughs> Otherwise you're going to have a toe, and it's true. I said, can you also shop with them that breaking over the outside corner because they're not shot to the knee? You know, the whole world heard doing that for the rest of his days. Because he can't get rid of it. It goes back to our, he's in the damn thing for 900 hours. It's not funny. He has them off for 14 minutes every time. So, coming back to forging shoes, I'm digressing a bit now, but weird shit comes into my head as I go on. Um, making that all comfortable. Um, Dusty said something that would stick, stick with me forever. He said, um, you know, you, you wake up and think, well, I've got six or seven head to do, and I'll do all right, I'll do it fine. The customer says, the customers don't know and the horses don't know. They don't know your ability, only think you do. Um, from you. And he's absolutely right. It's down to you as individuals to give your all. Not only for yourself, but for your families. Um, and it makes your days easier. So by putting on all these little details and understanding it, you are servicing the foot. And I've done this over my time. Should be forging on please finish what I'm saying. That you um, you can be asked to put on a product, yeah, and then you can say, you know you can't service it with that product. 
So you say to the professional you're dealing with, do you want the product or do you want the method? Well, I want the product. If the product or the service is fit for the rest of the days. I can give you the same in the method by handmade, and I can service the foot. And I've lost a few jobs because of that. Because they want to see the making brand stamp on the shoe that it was that product. But it will never service the foot. So I have to walk away because I know however accomplished you are, there is a limit to what you can actually do. Um, and I've left it to somebody else to put the product on. Because you're not going to win. It's as simple as that. Um, anyway, so that, that is a little basic old toe. Um, let me uh, let's do some shapes.
通什么意思？Imagine drawing a line, that is what centralises the clip when you pull it. Yeah? Not, don't go flat all day long because you'll end up with Dumbo's ears. Yeah? The pointness of a clip comes from the cent centre of the hammer and the high point and dragging it. See that, that contact, as you can see on there. Let's see if I can come around. Yeah, come around the front. The centre of that hammer is in line with the centre of the clip I've just pulled. Yeah. So when you drop your hammer and you put, if I should draw a line in, in the, um, if you watch this, there's a load of dust on there. If I draw a line with my hammer, see that? This one here. Yeah. No. It's, yeah, it's there. Like there it is. I just draw a line. Oh, I see where you are. If you watch my hammer. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that is me doing that there, lifting my hammer up and down. You are drawing the line. That's what centralises clips. So if your clips are going, oh, it's going over there. Oh, no, it's going over there. Oh, we've all been there. It's because you are not. You have to keep drawing the line like this. Yeah. And that is an art on its own, especially when you get into draft clips, because that, that's like. Angle in a moody camel. You just they don't want to do it. You've got to get this broad area. Then you've got to pull that. You have to stay a little bit flatter to pull that wide area. And then you have to drop towards the end. With these little guys, you can just get it started and then start pulling. But the big guys, you end up trying to navigate it and then start to pull it. 
wider face hammer can help because you're off scaling things. Um, where are we? inside the heels of the shoe and you're thinking well that's too short yeah but you're going to make it grow you're going to fan it out you're going to get it nice and thin and it wants to sit on either side about three eighths of an inch okay a little bit more for that guy and it is a good you know, if I remember years ago try and pour oh, Two years ago, we had to drop in a piece of rose. 
in a specimen show at the south of England show. I had a nightmare with that thing. And I was, you know, relatively, too bad for but I uh, oh my god, I don't get it going in. And I practiced it, practiced it, practiced it. Like a pretty good time in the one of the large students, and even that simple process was like a week. I left it a week before I went to the competition and practiced the tune because I thought that'd be fine. Now I was packing myself by the day I left, so I was like, I'm doing it. So it is a
Okay, just a quick drop tip. Yep. What's the best way to cut the files out? Do you use a bandsaw or do you I use a, um, just an angle grinder with a cutter disc. Okay. Cutter disc, any angle you want, nice and quick. Okay. Um, don't want to be cutting them in a bandsaw unless you get your ass hot and get them softer. Um, you can cut these cold, whatever, you know, straight out of the box. Um, but um, I usually heat them all up. Once I don't want something to cut them. Um, so that is it, guys. Thank you for listening to me. Um, so, were you rather than.